This is just various pictures, okay? My first bodybuilding show ever. That's me right there. You see that? Yeah. On stage, yeah. Yeah, that was in Worcester. So check this out. Who who are these people? Mike Martirazzo, yeah. Tom Prince, and me. <laughs> this is guest posing at Dean Caputo's show in 1997, I think. Wow. Yeah. Hot yes. skin, hot skin shorts. Yeah, same show. <laughs> Here's me. I was 23. Dude. 23 years old. I just won the nationals. Here's me at Lonnie's show, one of the guest posings for his. West Coast Classic. Yeah, that was like early years. Yeah. Guess what? What now? No blowers today. Sunday. <laughs> I'm never here on Sunday. It's, uh, it's the holy day. <laughs> That's right. It's God's day. Yes. So I was going to ask you this because a lot of people have been asking questions. Uh, when we do the jaywalking and they have uh, inquiries and stuff. And something that keeps coming back all the time is, how did you become the businessman you, you are today? People are always interested in knowing if you always had that business sense when you were a kid or uh, did you teach yourself? Did you have people uh, kind of grooming you? Or where did you learn it from and how did you become successful, basically? I don't know if I call myself a business guy. No? no I, mean I would think so. I'm just a guy that made the best of what was brought to me, right? Or what I, I mean, I worked my ass off, but. Um, yeah, but some people work hard their whole life and have nothing, dude. You yeah, know that. I mean, I'm going to talk a little bit about working hard and when people, I think people have a, people have a misconception of what my upbringing was. And I talk about it a little bit, but, you know, when I was, you know, I was born the seventh child in my family so for me i had three brothers three sisters and they are a lot of them were already teenagers by the time i was born and my parents separated when i was young probably like four three or four and uh you know my brothers and sisters kind of watched over me because you know my mom had moved at the time and my dad was working as a highway superintendent so you know we were kind of like i, I don't want to say thrown out there but we are like, my brothers and sisters all worked jobs. No one went to college, my brothers and sisters. A lot of them dropped out of high school because it just wasn't something back then that, you know, people didn't go to college. Yeah. And they took on trades and eventually, as you know, my brothers did concrete, my sister's a banker. Um, and then my sister and I, you know, the, the younger ones, were a year apart after a big gap, you know, we went to college, but uh and that's only because i didn't really want to go to college to be honest but i was kind of it was like the trend right mm -hmm. um i wanted to be a cop right so when i was even like i remember when i was like four or five six years old i think when i was five or six i remember i used to go pick corn I had a big farm and you actually you saw the field yeah. My dad was paying it, I think, when you guys were there. That's he right. was up on the hill, remember? That's right, in the tractor. So yeah. they used to grow corn there, and I would pick corn for the day for five bucks a day. And then I would actually sit at the farm stand. There's a little st farm stand, like on the side of that main road right there where my mom lives, and we'd sell corn uh, for whatever. I don't even know how much it was, 25 cents a year or something. <laughs> So I started like learning, okay, this is how you exchange money, right? And how old were you, like five or six? Yeah, I was young, bro. Dude. And no one, dude, no one had credit cards. It was just cash. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, and I remember, dude, I remember going to the, you know, it was Christoph's farm. And I would go to, you know, old man Christoph. We'd all sit in this room when we were done. And he had peanut butter and jelly. And we'd make these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> and that's what we'd eat at the end of the day. And he would count out the money to everybody. Oh, you so know, you worked for someone actually? That wasn't yeah, for it, yourself, yeah, okay? Because he had, he had, he was growing corn. You know, we had animals and shit. But, okay. Um, and he had a huge pig farm, bro. They had thousands of pigs. Oh wow! And so he would count the money, and I'd be so jealous of the older kids because they'd get like ten bucks. <laughs> and I remember I save up all that money, and I would like, you know, I would buy clothes or whatever buy a pair you know back then you could buy a pair of shoes they were cheap you know 30 yeah. bucks or whatever yeah and uh you know i started learning 
about money and we didn't work for allowances on my for my dad or anything you know I started working at the age 11 um, but I watched my brothers and sisters work jobs mm -hmm. because they weren't going to college they dropped out of high school so think about it at 14 15 a lot of them were working like real jobs you know yeah and they had nice things like they bought cars and and uh you know i learned to be self-sufficient and i think that that early seeing that really you know i caught on to it and yeah. said you know i want to be a working person i mean when i worked in high school bro when i let's take my summer vacations like from you know my freshman sophomore junior year senior year i worked 75 hours a week dude 75 so i would work 14 15 16 hour days some days Whoa. Um, because remember the daylight's longer, right? Yeah. And we would work under the headlights. It's our family business. So that's really, and I, I listened to my brothers communicate and bid jobs. I learned how they kind of did that. And I said, man, I, now I know how to kind of make, I remember them doing checks at the end of the week and doing accounting. They'd have their ledger and we'd sit outside the bank every Friday and they would basically do the deposits and everything. I watched all this. Wow. And so I learned super early yeah. about running a business. And my dad <clears throat> always told me, he's like, you know, you need to work comes first. Always. And even Angie would tell you because he had like kind of heart to heart with her. And he told her, like, I, I taught my kids to work, you know. Yeah. So when I started, you know, doing the bodybuilding thing. I went from my family to someone like Chris Aceto, who was a huge mentor to me. I was around Ed Connors early, um, Joe Weider, um, my, my good friend that, that kind of helped support me, um, this guy Bruce Vartanian, mm -hmm. who was a local guy, and they all pounded in my head like, this is a business, this is a business. It's yeah. not, like it's, yeah, I never looked at bodybuilding as like a career, even though I said, I called it a sport. I called it a career. I'm not sure what it really is. It was an opportunity. Yeah. So I realized that, okay, there is an opportunity to make X amount of money, but I never focused on, okay, how much can I make? It was from inside, meaning like prize money and yeah. endorsements. It was more, okay, how can I build a brand mm -hmm. and build a company and use it as a, as a step to go to bigger and better, better things, right? And you know... Because you knew me when I made good money, but not the kind of money I made later. Right. And you know, watching me, I always called you and said, Dave, I got this opportunity. I'm going to invest in this. Or yeah. I'm going to buy this property. Or I'm going to, you know, do the, this outside thing other than just fitness stuff. And granted, the fitness stuff always, I can't steer away from the fitness. It made me the most money, right? Yeah. I mean, let's be real. The biggest, the biggest contracts and... What's nice about the fitness stuff is when I was getting an endorsement deal, like I was paid that money. Okay, so let's take for example, if you're getting if you're getting twenty thousand dollars a month from a company, okay, as an endorsee. So basically they're saying, okay, say you use our products, you know, take the pictures, you have to come in for appearances, whatever. Um, you don't use anything else. Um, here's a check. There's no expense to that. Right. You get it? And yep. if there are expenses, the company usually offsets those expenses. So if there's travel, that com that includes travel. Yep. You know, your per diems and this and that. So you may get 20000 but you're also getting, you know, if you're getting reimbursed or they're just paying. Like you're getting out there and you're, they're helping you build your brand. That's right. So it's not only helping the company, but when I traveled to like the Middle East... To Dubai for the first time in 2008, I made connections that today I'm using to my advantage. That's right. But it was paid for by the company and they were, you know, so there's, there's a lot of thankful benefits that I still have with all those brands that I was relative to, to, to create those, those opportunities. And I've done business with so many guys, you know, I guess posed at shows that I became a partner in. Yeah. Now carry my name. Yeah. Um, Massachusetts, for example. Um, you know, Jimmy Dakotas brought me out there every year for the New Englands and whatever. We end up changing the name to the Jay Cutler. 
you know, and then we added the the New Englands later when Steve came on board as the chairperson. So mm -hmm. there's uh there's just so much opportunity and I think you learn as you go. That's why I hate to say like um I I strategically made moves that helped me. Uh but it wasn't like I sat down and I had I went to school to develop this game plan on how I'm going to tackle bodybuilding. Yeah. Right? It's just opportunity, it's relationships. Um, and that's the one thing is, especially the, the followers here we have on YouTube, you know, you know my relationship with everyone is pretty neutral, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't talk bad about people and, you know, I may not agree, but sometimes if I don't agree... You keep it to yourself. Keep it to myself because yeah. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. And yeah. People would say, well, you know, that's not right but unless they're calling me out and pointing directly at me and i have to defend myself but very rarely does someone come at me yeah be, there's no reason to know. you know what i'm saying like yeah. even then you take the high roads but dave think how many people yeah. i helped i know in cer some sort of way over the years you've been around they came to me and said how do i do this how can i build this and yeah you know sometimes me just saying hey this person is legit that was all it took i know because that my stamp made it meant a lot right but i think it's it, that's the reason why you're doing so well too it comes back to you always it, good it karma comes back, but you know you do you good also for people, have to so. be strategic about stuff so if you ask me you know i don't know if this got off track a little bit but i learned as i went and i learned yeah. that i never had a stop i never stopped working hard yeah so you remember when i was you know running all the business like for jcutler.com yeah. before I launched the new brand. And I'd come home from these trips and you'd call me and you'd say, what do you have to do? I said, dude, I'm gonna be packing orders for 12 to 15 hours yeah. a day. Yeah. And everyone used to ask me, why the, dude, why <laughs> do you do this? I know. But I loved it. Yeah. And it was personal for the people that ordered. Think, think about the people on the other end. Yeah. To know here I am on social media packing touching your order yeah personally signing your order it means a lot yeah so i still do that so that's why i launched the memorabilia site now talk about that because someone just asked me when is jay's because we mentioned it last yeah. time real quick so it's now live you can talk about jay it. jay cutler shop is live and what you have there <clears throat> is signed merch so dvds books magazines eight by ten certain t-shirts hats i am going to add stuff each week newer to the site okay jcutlershop.com put it on the yes text. yeah um but you guys wanted autograph stuff i don't offer it on the current jay cutler site jcutler.com with all the supplements because as many of you know my team ships all that stuff i'm not there every day shipping it i don't do it from las vegas any longer so yeah. i do have my sh shop here in vegas and uh, I'm signing all the merch. So now you can get the, the famous That's awesome. yellow poster, yeah. the undisputed poster, and yeah, everybody wants the that. quad stomp, yeah. eight by 10. Nice. So I don't expect it to be crazy, but I have a section here called Jay's Closet, and I'm gonna sell off. <laughs> I'm gonna sell off some specific items. That is cool. And my thought is, Dave, I have those three Arnold Classic jackets. Ah, oh, dude. And I'm thinking about putting those up. They're going to be high dollar items because they're one of one. Of course. And they're expensive to begin with. Yes. To begin with. Yeah. So when I put those up, you know, they may be a lot higher priced, but I watch what people sell certain things for in the net. And I know people frame this stuff and uh, it means a lot to them. So I don't know if you could do uh, it's possible on your side. I would do like, a, what do you call it? That's like on a bidding? Like a, yes, I did a bidding. I don't yeah. know if it's possible, but I'm sure people would like that some people are diehard fans yeah. you know i mean people are asking me yesterday i mentioned it on on my live for facebook my clothes group <clears throat> and they said man i want the autograph to tom x and yeah i'm like all right well yep. sometimes it's hard for me because i'm like oh man i'll just give these things away you know i know but it has that it has yeah i know it means different a value for other people yeah so so now you know i'm invested in all these things dave and i i don't I mean, lately, people have been prying stuff out of me. Um, 
this week alone, last week, I called on a few properties, um, investment opportunities, apartments, that kind of stuff. To rent or to own like wanna, a commercial building? I want to own some rentals there, certain certain areas. Oh, nice. Uh, so I'm kind of getting back into some residential real estate, which I said I never would. Well, buy before October then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know about houses though. Oh, okay. I, I want to do like two family, four plexes. That oh, of. that's smart. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, you, we talked about the warehouse and yes, having a gym and all that stuff. That's was, uh, that'd be great. I mean, if commercial real estate comes down and I see a good buy, yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to uh, to launch the famous Cutler. People would go, dude. Facility, right? They so would go. Yeah. You can have a store in there and sell your clothing and sell your subs and the gym and everything. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. For sure. We'd have to see. But yeah. So that's kind of how it all started for me, wow. man. And uh, you know, I've I've surrounded myself with great advisement. I have a great team, number one. I have a great legal team around me, as you know. Yeah. I have a great finance guy. You know, I'm I'm set up more for retirement now than than ever. I mean I have very little concern for you know financial return as much as m other people do yeah I mean we're in awkward times right now yeah so for me uh, my hardest part bro is like waking up every day and and being somewhat restrictive Meaning, yeah like I don't want to wear a mask and I don't want to uh, get on a plane and yeah. be limited and yeah you get it? Yeah. I, get I don't it. want to say bad. You know, no, talk, no, I get it. It's just it's, talk bad. Yeah. But I want to be able to go to the Mecca bodybuilding and we can't. I know. You know, I want to be able to call you and say, I'm coming to California for three days. I want to ride bikes on the beach. Yeah. I don't want to run into tents everywhere. I know. It, the dream is, the dream is, um, it's not there. It's, I mean, yeah. you, you're talking about moving to Vegas. I know. What does that tell me? I, I never thought I'd see that day. <laughs> no, me neither. I mean, did you think a year ago you'd be moving to Las no Vegas? No way. I mean, I love Vegas, but and I came here for the real estate, which yeah. is Olympia tax reasons when my accountant told me go, you know, save that yeah. state tax. Yeah. We still pay for it. When you when you go to these places, you know, you know registrations a lot. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't know. you end up paying for other things a little more. Yeah. That you don't. But pay. overall, it's still cheaper though. Yeah, overall, Vegas. it's still cheaper. I mean, yeah, I mean, anything <clears throat> cheaper than California. Yeah, it's the worst place, money-wise, financially. Yeah. Okay. So in a nutshell, I think what you're telling people is to work hard, and be aware of of opportunity coming your way and seize them, right? Yeah, and surround That's... yourself with people that are gonna lift you. Yeah. You always hear that. But you really gotta. It's you, true. You have to. You have to be around people of a level. You know, and and you know, you and I, like we're a different breed, right? Like you're. I don't think you want to own your own business and do all these like extraordinary things, but you love bodybuilding, right? Yeah. And I mean, I don't even know if I call you a film guy. No. I'm just a fan, dude. I'm just a fan. I mean, you're fan. just like a hype guy. Yeah. That fell into, <laughs> like, hey, this is what you like to do. You started as, you know, doing journalism, which you were never a writer, right? No. I used to take pictures and I, I used to have a, a column, you know, and a you, picture. And you worked a solid, you worked with good cameras. I mean, yeah. you had a nice camera. Ke at the Kevin time. Horton gave it to me, yeah. That was a and, real professional uh, one. You know, we shoot on a, on a Samsung. I saw, know some people see it and they're like, man. I can't believe you guys shoot on that, but like I was saying to someone, like the fans don't don't really care. They talk about the mic here and there, they complain about it, but you listen, man, this is raw. Like half the stuff you guys are seeing on here, especially the vlogs, I'm shooting on an iPhone seven. Yeah, what you Plus, do yourself, it's yeah. just yeah, it's your phone. Um, I have a amazing guy with a Canon camera, shoots 4K and everything. We never use it. Yeah. Because it's just, it's a lot of work to download and compress the files. Plus in the gym, some gyms don't like it. You have to ask permission. Yeah. And whereas if you use your phone, everyone so does this it. Is a, so this yeah. is, the reason I brought that up is 
fuck, no excuses. That's right. For everybody, <laughs> log your stuff. One thing I can tell you guys that you have an advantage over me. Dave, can you imagine if I had all that footage? I know. From the early years. Oh, and my I, God. And I have no excuse because they had handhelds, right? Yeah. I was doing home videos. I My mom has a million home videos of me, which would <sighs> be amazing to release someday. Yeah. But think about if I had the early footage of me competing. Oh, my God. At these shows that I, I know. could display to people and show, like, this is my personality. My voice was so different. You I know. know. And Yeah, when you won Teen National, I'm like, your voice is yeah, completely different. I was a kid. But you were still 19, almost a, a man. It's changed a lot after that. It's rare. Yeah. It changed late. Wow. And, like, log that footage. Save yeah, dude. It. Yeah. Put it in files. Because you never Take know. Take pictures of everything. Yeah. Because you never know where you'll be in 10, And I'm going to show you guys, okay? We're going to walk back to the house <clears> right now. I'm going to show you. This is going to wrap up. This is going to be the best part of the video. So this is going to make people watch to the <laughs> end. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you put this in the beginning. Okay. And this is going to make people watch this thing to the end and understand, okay? Because there's a box of photos I have in my garage right now. <laughs> and I'm going to pull out a few photos. I'm going to show you guys something that you've never seen before. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay, cool. Awesome. Now, Dave. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, Polaroids. Damn. Okay, so come here. Okay. All right. So let's go back. This is just various pictures, okay? My first body bling show ever. That's me right there. You see that? Yeah. On stage, yeah. Yeah, that was in Worcester. So check this out. Who who are these people? Mike Matarazzo, yeah. Tom Prince, and me. <laughs> this is guest posing at Dean Caputo's show in 1997, I think. Wow. Yeah. Hot guess. skin, hot skin shorts. Yeah, same show. <laughs> Here's me. I was 23. Dude. 23 years old. I just won the Nationals. Here's me at Lonnie's show, one of the guest posings for his. West Coast Classic. Yep, that was like early years. Yep. So this was a photo shoot I did with Weeder. This is the Polaroids that used to mm. come out of the cameras. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That was probably two thousand. That was probably 1998. I was going to say 99, but yeah. Yep. Okay. The famous 2001 Olympia right yes. there. Who took that? Uh, sure. I think Kerry did. Yeah, it looks from the stand, yeah. Here's me uh, at my old house that you went to with Scrappy. Oh, I remember that picture. Yeah. My motorcycle, my custom Harley I bought for 15 grand. Oh, cool. That's in Aliso Viejo. Okay. Look at 01. Yeah. 1122. So it's after I placed second at the Olympia. <laughs> Me with Nasser and Gunter. Oh, yeah. Doing a weeder appearance. Well, Nasser was skinny then. Yeah. One. Tell me who this is. Uh, Palumbo. Oh, jeez. This was at the Nationals. This was like the Martinez. year I won. Yeah, this is the year I won. I don't think so, but that's okay. that's Palumbo. Okay. Here's me at one of the Weeder appearances selling my 8x10s. Wow. Yeah. How old were you there? Mm, 25. Yeah. So this, bro, was me before I ever did the Tournament of Champions. This was me at 20. I was 21 here. Wow. This was training out in Framingham at the World Gym. Pretty good for 21, yeah, right? right? My first professional win, Night of Champions. 99. Here's me. No, 2000. 2000, okay. So Leverone's band was playing. Oh, okay. On the stage. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. These are my original dogs. That's Scuttles and Manzi. That's on the treadmill at our house. So that was Scuttles and that was Manzi. Cute. What's Manzi? Is it a Shih Tzu? What yeah. It's oh, like okay. a... So tell me where these pictures were taken. Let's see how you remember. Okay, hang on. This was taken by uh, that a Lund? Flex Magazine at the World Gym in Elise, uh, in Lake Forest. Oh, yes. Yep. Looks like a Lund picture. Is that a Lund no, picture? No, it was, no? Uh, I think it was Kevin Horton, actually. Okay, wow. I think it was Kevin Horton. Kevin, if you see this, let us know if that's yours. Okay, so here we go. 99 Iron Man. Prep pictures. 
This is me getting ready for the look at wow. two fifteen. So this was February fifteenth, ninety nine, and here's me getting ready for my first Arnold Classic victory. Oh, your back got so much better. Yep, this is me at the at the O uh, two Crunch Fitness O two okay. um, on the five in uh, it, on Mich in Michigan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. Here's me guest posing at the thing with Francois and those guys. I mean, uh, Mike Maros. So this is the this is them. This is a, probably another day, but yeah. that was me. And here's me at 19, taking pictures at my house, Polaroids. To send to Chris, probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, just to track progress. But you right. see how big my legs were and my I back know. was. Your back came up a lot. I mean, look at this one right here. Yeah. That's what a difference, huge huh? Huge difference, yeah. Crazy. I was, two, I was 240 here, and I was about 280 here. So 40 pounds difference. That's awesome. What was your what was your weakest body part when you started? Legs were great. Yeah, my arms. Arms. Arms back. You know, back took a long time. Yeah. Especially against Ronnie. You know, if I didn't have to compete against Ronnie, it yeah. probably wouldn't have been so serious, right? Yeah. I thought your back was great in one though. Yeah. So wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, so pretty cool insight. Yeah. All right, thanks, champ. Awesome. So take those pictures. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. That's the point. Yes. All right. All right, dude. Wa. I remember. Oh, this is for, for Dudua, huh? Yes. And it's to Frank. Frank, to okay, Frank, yeah. yeah. This one's to Frank. So we'll show Frank. It's actually you signed it, not somebody else. <laughs> All right. I miss you, Scotty, so. He actually offered to pay you, isn't that nice? He says, I can send him some money if he wants. I can only say that Tony needs to. <laughs> want to buy some extra juice mix or something. <laughs> Um, and this one is to Kathy. With That's a for her gym. C A T H Y. Yeah. yeah. Does she call it anything, or just? Uh, her gym is called uh, Power Cat. Power Cat. C A T. There you go. Power Cat gym. gym. Think, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I looked everywhere in her place in her gym to see if she had one, and she doesn't. So she'll be happy. They get all the Olympia posters and all that stuff in there. Kill it. All right, so Kathy, this says to Kathy and Power Cat Jim. I can barely read my own writing. <laughs> all the best success. Kill it. Good luck, Jay Cutler. Awesome. Mr. O. Because everyone always asks me when I sign their stuff, what did I say? <laughs> Sometimes I have to read it. I'm like, damn, I don't know what I wrote. You get a doctor's and signature. And this is Frank. Uh, train hard. Good luck. Jay Cutler, Mr. Awesome. Hall. Thanks, Jim. So hopefully they can frame these. Yeah, up. awesome. All right, thanks, buddy.